a legacy in Silicon Valley. Yeah, because Palo Alto is kind of this mythical place. Humans have always searched for mythical, magical places. Atlantis, El Dorado, Shangri-La. But none of them have actually been found, besides one. It started on a typical workday for me when I was sifting through maps, which, yes, is something I routinely just do. Oh my god. <laughs> Paper maps, digitized maps, animated maps, I just can't get enough. So I'm sitting there looking through some maps, and I stumble upon this. This is a super old British map of North America with a giant island off the west coast. The island is labeled California. Okay, so clearly some cartographer just got this totally wrong and made a mistake, right? But wait, here's another, and another, and another? What is going on here? This one's from 1785, or from 1750. This one's from 1690, and from 1650. Like these maps of California as an island are spanning over 200 years. Drawn by the Dutch, and the Germans, and the British, and the Japanese, everyone is making a map showing California as an island. Is this like a tectonic plates thing? Like, was California an island? Because as we dug, we found thousands of these maps. California as an island everywhere. I had to get to the bottom of this to figure out what was going on here. Luckily, I live in Washington, DC, so there's somewhere I need to go visit to figure this out. In case anyone is in DC and is looking for a nuclear fallout shelter, I found one. The Library of Congress. That's also my uh, background as well, that map. Really? Yeah, yes. I love it. It's just so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And so weird. Look at this puppy. Wow. Wow. Oh my god. So wait, this is really weird. I'm looking at these original maps. 1600s. California is an island. But then look at this one. This is a map from like a few decades earlier and it shows California accurately mapped earlier, like decades earlier in like the 1500s. They had it right. And it looks pretty accurate to the California we know today. <laughs> and then suddenly the whole world started mapping California as an island. This is super weird. I vow now to figure out what the hell is going on with California. This first started as a nerdy history cartography question, but soon we fell into a way deeper story than we signed up for. The story of a mythical place called California, full of gold, and magic and dreams, fueled by people who weren't totally grounded in reality, but rather in dreams of something bigger, something different, something that may or may not truly exist. This island teaches us something bigger than just how humans draw maps. It's actually more about how humans want to see the world, about how fake ideas spread and why. So let me show you how for hundreds of years, California was an island and how it still kind of is.
Hey, um, wake up for a second. Do you mind if I chat with you about something? Yes. I, I make YouTube videos, and in order to do that, I have a business that allows me to do that, and the business is from sponsorships. And so I'm making a video today that's sponsored by a company called Storyblocks, which is a company I've used for like a decade, even before they came to sponsor a video. Storyblocks is like a massive library of visual and audio assets that you can use to make your videos better. So creators of all size, small, medium, large, giant creative teams can subscribe to Storyblocks at whatever budget or price point they need and can have an unlimited library of like 4K amazing stock footage that is diverse, that is ever growing. There's like thousands and thousands of clips. I use this all the time for my videos. One of the big challenges for creators is that it's really hard to go out into the field and shoot stuff. And so when you're making a video, you don't have a lot of like really good visual assets. With Storyblocks, you literally have a subscription to an unlimited amount of amazing visuals and sound effects and animation templates. It's a really freaking good deal. In the video I'm making right now, it's about maps of California and why California used to be an island. You're gonna see like tons of Storyblox footage that you won't even know is Storyblox footage, but it is because I use it all the time. So anyway, thank you Storyblox for supporting this video. Thank you for listening. There's a link in my description. Clicking that link helps support this channel, but it also sends you to Storyblox so you can check out their pricing plan find something that fits your budget. So now I'm headed back to the studio to figure out what the hell is going on with California being mapped as an island. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is California. And this is Baja California, which is a part of Mexico. And this is the Sea of Cortez. It's not a full blown sea, it's actually a gulf, the Gulf of California. But we call it the Sea of Cortez, and you're about to find out why. I actually went here once when I was a 19 year old Mormon missionary living in Baja California for two years. Anyway, that is not important. Let's talk about how this became an island. California originally was an idea, a myth. It was a fictional setting written into this novel from 1510 in Spain, like 500 years ago. California was like Atlantis or the Garden of Eden. The author described it as an island populated by black women without any men existing there. On the entire island, there was no metal other than gold, and it was ruled by Queen Calafia, hence California. Again, it was a fake place. This is not a real place. This is a guy writing a novel about a fake place. But while the author doesn't say exactly where this is, he basically says that it is, quote, at the right hand of the Indies. Reminder that the Indies is like over here in Southeast Asia. This novel was published in Spain about 50 years after the invention of the printing press. So printed books were like a new technology, a big thing. And this book was really popular. Oh, and by the way, the book also mentions that the women in California, these like women warriors, were quote, of beautiful and robust bodies. So you have new technology, books, and beautifully robust women, basically clickbait for Spanish sailors in the 1500s. They were out there exploring the world and reading this book while they were out to sea. Oh, and remember, at this time, these Spanish sailors are out exploring the world that Columbus had run into when he was trying to find a quicker way to get to Asia. So it's like 10 years after Columbus, and Spain is sending people to explore the new world, and by explore we mean wink wink, extract resources and like destroy the population and make Spain rich. And one of those expeditions had this guy on board, Hernán Cortés. He came over as a young dude, but he quickly became one of the most shrewd, aggressive, like detail-oriented colonizers that Spain had. He goes on a big expedition where he takes his 500 men and 16 horses to go look for gold. But Cortez was secretly harboring another goal for this expedition. He was reading the romance novel that everyone else was reading, and he kind of wanted to find California, the fictional place in the book. This would be like some guy being out in like Nepal on a hike or something, and he's like, I secretly want to find Middle Earth. This kind of reminds me when I was in Wales in 2011. And I like secretly wanted to find Hogwarts. Like that kind of actually happened. I was young and I was like, what if I stumble upon Hogwarts? Like I get it, Cortez. I get it. You read it in the book and you're like, this place is probably real. Cortez, a legitimate Spanish explorer is now looking for a fake place in a book. So Cortez, after he stumbles upon a great civilization, allies with their enemies and destroys them with his guns and his smallpox, small side note that can be covered in a different time. He eventually makes it over here. Oh, by the way, 
Cortez was kind of going rogue this whole time. He didn't have permission to do this. And the Spanish leadership were kind of freaking out. So much so that Cortez had to write a bunch of letters justifying how good all of this conquest was. Anyway, Cortez sends out a mission to go explore a little further off this coast, like around here. Holy shit, they found something! Cortez is so giddy about this new discovery that he writes a letter back to the king saying that his men talked to some natives Se mucho a ver a you, who quote, affirm that there is an island una isla, toda poblada de mujeres, inhabited only by women and there are no men. That men come every once in a while for them to like conceive but they only keep the female children. Diez jornadas desde provincia, it's only 10 days away que es muy rica, and that this island is very rich in pearls, perlas, and gold. Y oro. What? Holy shit. No men, only women, rich in gold? And where does Cortez think he is right now? Well, back when the world looked like this in these people's minds, Cortez is just to the right of the Indies. Which is exactly the location described in the book for California. Cortez just discovered California. Oh man, this is amazing. I, I can feel the excitement of Cortez who literally has spent years thinking about this island and now he thinks he's found it, California. But this is not what the King of Spain signed up for. So the King of Spain is like, no, dude, no, we don't, we're not looking for like mythical islands. So he cuts off all of the funding for any of these like expeditions. So Cortez turns to his own personal wealth and starts funding these expeditions on his own to go map out and find California the island. Now I have to go to California. He personally goes on a voyage and starts mapping and mapping and lo and behold, He's finding what looks like an island. And they set up a colony right here on this island. And they name the island California after the island of Queen Calafia from the book. Okay, 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 spoiler alert. Remember that Cortez is like right here. He's looking up this massive gulf that he thinks is like a full-blown sea that you can like circumnavigate. But he's just like at the bottom of Baja California, the peninsula. And worst of all, he's burning his own cash to keep exploring this California island idea. He's got California fever. Maybe the first, but definitely not the last to have it. We're going to California. So Cortez keeps going and he's feeling really excited. He's like, if this is an island, then that means that this sea probably extends up and over the top of North America. And maybe there's a whole strait that goes all the way back to Spain, making it super easy for us to get between Spain and Asia. And so he keeps mapping and mapping and mapping and Oh no. Womp womp. Cortez ruined the myth for everyone. And he like wasted away a bunch of his money in the process. But wait a minute. This is like still the beginning of the story. Like you see how much longer is left in this video. Like this isn't the story. What's crazy is what happens next. Because even though Cortez found out that California wasn't an island, this was all before this happened. And this is where the story gets very juicy. I-M-H-O. Because somehow, even after all of this, California still somehow managed to make the world believe that it was an island for hundreds of years. Okay, so after the whole Cortez, California dreaming incident, Spain went on to ignore mapping California for a very long time. I mean, they were really busy conquering and destroying and pillaging a lot of other places in the region. That is until the late 1500s, where they catch wind of a British sailor who happens to be their literal sworn enemy, who apparently just landed here in what was gonna become Oregon to claim all of this land for Britain. And Spain was like, oh shit, we gotta get back in the game up there in that place, what was it called again? Cortez called it like California after like from the novel or something. Anyway, let's get some guys back up there to like map it out. We can't be asleep at the wheel while the British are showing up on the west coast of North America. So they send out this expedition of guys to go map the west coast of California. Because after all, if you can map something, you can conquer it. That's all they were thinking about here was Britain. Okay, and this is where things get so good, all because of another California dreamer, this guy. Fray Antonio de la Ascensión. A Spanish dude who wasn't really a sailor or an explorer or a cartographer, he was kind of like a Catholic priest. Aboard this expedition, there were legit map makers. And Fray Antonio was literally the assistant 
He had some knowledge of map making, but like he was literally the plan B in case the main map maker died. His job was really just to be religious. Boy, did he do a lot more than that. Fray Antonio, the peon assistant, is actually the most important person in this entire story. Because he had an agenda. He really wanted Spain to settle more aggressively in California. He felt the pull of California, this mythical cool place on the west coast, and it was his life's mission to sell the idea of Spain coming to California and setting up more permanent settlements. No one on board this expedition was on the same page. They were there just simply mapping the west coast. That's all they were doing. So they're going along this route. Fray Antonio's on the ship, probably really bored because he's literally not doing anything. He's looking overboard at this land sort of in the distance and he starts to see everything through his lens of total bias. This bias that California was amazing and that Spain should settle it. So they're passing like right here on their way to the west coast and Fray Antonio writes, quote, here begins the entrance of the Sea of California which continues all the way up north into this strait that actually goes above North America. And that if you go, you can find passage and navigation to Spain. Wait, what? Antonio, you're sitting on the side of a boat right here looking at basically this. And from that you've deduced that California is an island and that there's a passage above North America that goes back to Spain? I swear, California does this to people. It makes them ignore reality in the name of a big dream. Yet the thought of giving up everything here and starting fresh in California, it's it's so tempting and, and exhilarating. That is a theme here. It happened to Cortez, it's happening to Fray Antonio. The guys on the ship are like, dude, listen Antonio, we get it, you want Spain to settle in California, but that's not what this mission is about. We're here to map the west coast of North America, so just like chill out and do your job, sit around and be religious. And Fray Antonio like continues to wax super nostalgic. He's like, San Diego is a very fine bay, very fine anchorage, protected from all the winds and undertow. <laughs> like. Anyway, this expedition goes on to fulfill its original purpose. They map the west coast of California and they create this decent looking map. But Fray Antonio walked away from this mission with a very different view. He was convinced that California was an island and that there was a mythical northern passage that existed all the way back to Spain. And he was so audacious to say, quote, I believe it will be necessary and important to use what he's created, what he saw, for revising and correcting the existing maps of the earth, since the existing maps basically are very different than what they are in fact. Translation, Spain, you need to change your maps to what I saw when I was sitting there bored looking over the boat because California is an island. I mean, the confidence in this guy is astounding. Fran Antonio like makes a big ruckus about this. He tries to get Spain to change their maps to make California an island. It got to the point where the official map maker of Spain had to actually say, dude, you're wrong. He said, quote, since no proof of the Lake of Gold or Strait of Anion, which is that Northern Strait exist, and since California has not been circumnavigated, little credit should be given to these concepts. Like, dude, Fray Antonio, you're fake news. You've been debunked, like give it up. But Fray Antonio does not give it up. For the next two decades, he continues to pitch his fake version of California, sending loads of reports and maps of his version of California, what he saw, all with the hope that Spain would catch on and come settle California. And he started to actually gain some followers. He was pitching this, he was like on a campaign to like spread this idea that California is an island, I saw it with my own eyes. And this is where it gets crazy because guess who enters the story? But pirates. Early 1600s is like the golden age for pirates. Thousands of pirates were sailing the seas and because Spain was like the best at like stealing stuff and conquering places, a Spanish ship was always like jackpot for the pirates. One such Spanish ship was sailing back from the New World to Spain. And on board this ship was one of Fray Antonio's letters with a copy of his fake map that showed California as an island. And the ship was taken over by Dutch pirates. They took the ship, they steal all the stuff, and they stumble upon this BS fake map from Fray Antonio. Like a deep fake of the map of North America. And the pirates are like, whoa, look at this. The Spanish have California as an island. Little context here, maps back then were kind of a national secret. Like they didn't share maps very much. So these Dutch guys are like, holy shit, we just discovered a big Spanish secret that California is an island and that there's actually a strait that goes over the top of North America. And they've been keeping it from us the whole time. So this map from Fray Antonio gets back to the Netherlands, which at the time were rising as like really good map makers and sailors. And boom, a few years later, the fake news just got retweeted. Here it is. 
This little map on the cover page of some Dutch atlas, you see for the first time, California not connected to the mainland. But wait, Cortez already mapped this and showed that this wasn't an island like a hundred years ago. No, what is happening? The answer is Fray Antonio and pirates. The myth was back. Shortly after that, another map pops up. The Dutch are slowly adopting the idea of California as an island. And in true fake news form, everyone else was like, well, like the Dutch, they're legit. They said that California is an island, so I guess it is. Word eventually spread to London where a famous map maker made this map. Wait a minute, I know this map. This is the one that originally got me interested in this whole entire topic. Whoa, hold on. And now I finally understand what it says in this lower left. California, sometimes supposed to be a part of the Western continent, but since by a Spanish chart taken by Hollanders, it is found to be a goodly island. British cartographer, verified account, retweets Fray Antonio's delusion, and suddenly this map with California as an island is legitimized and starts to spread like wildfire. Seems legit, says a Dutch cartographer. Boom, retweet. Then to Germany, then to France, then to Italy, then to Sweden. And Turkey is now drawing California as an island. And Austria is drawing California as an island. And now Japan is drawing California as an island. Retweet, retweet, retweet. Oof, man, where are the mods on this one? Who's gonna fact check this? The entire globe now thinks that California is an island. And so yeah, this is how it happened. Lots of wishful thinking, a few crazy coincidences with pirates. The whole world thinks California is an island. For 200 years, 200 years, that's like several lifetimes. All because this one guy was obsessed with a fake vision and he wouldn't let it go. Now, of course, eventually explorers would go and fact check this and debunk it. And maps slowly but surely start to phase out California as an island. But I wanna argue that this wasn't just Fray Antonio and his wishful thinking. I kinda think that California does this to people. Starting with Cortez and continuing to this day, California has continued to have a mythical pull on people. At least it has on European people coming to California looking for something magical, looking for gold, eventually actually finding gold. Like, which is kind of insane to me that the prophecy from a 1510 novel written in Spain kind of came true in 1849 when a bunch of people found gold in California. As the local people who had been in California for thousands of years were exterminated and replaced by industrious Europeans, California remained and continues to be a place where people go to dream big. Yeah, because Palo Alto is kind of this mythical place where you know, all the startups come from. Like Cortez, who spent all of his money trying to like figure out what California was, or Fray Antonio, who spent a good part of his life trying to convince people that California was an island, something special. And ultimately, it worked. People go to California to chase dreams that usually aren't grounded in any sense of reality. You've been on the cover of magazines. You could transform healthcare, not only here in America, but around the world. They go and they push and they push and they push on some vision of something new. Even when those dreams rest on spreading disinformation to the whole world. Was that too on the nose? Am I stretching the analogy too much with disinformation and propaganda and Fray Antonio and Silicon Valley? Like, are you getting this? It, I'll stop. The point is that to me, this is the beauty and the peril of California as a place. Yeah, it's attached to the continent. We all know that, but California kind of is an island. Ecologically, it has thousands of totally unique species of flora and fauna that don't exist anywhere else. Economically, it's the fifth biggest economy on earth. <laughs> and culturally, I mean, California is its own culture. And the result is that today, people still do what those guys were doing in the 15, 1600s. Coming west to California to chase dreams, to chase gold, to chase something new. In that sense, California is an island. Fray Antonio was right the whole time. Okay, see ya.